Hey mommies and welcome back to another video. It's your girl Portia and in this video I'm going to tell you some tips that I wish I would have known before I had my emergency c-section. A lot of women may have a planned c-section and a lot of women may not even know that they be, may be going under a cesarean by emergency c-section. So definitely I encourage you to educate yourself on both spectrums because you never know whether you may have a vaginal birth or if anything may happen that you may have a cesarean. So if you want to know some tips that I wish I would have known, definitely stay tuned. video off you guys I want to definitely let you guys know that having a cesarean also known as a c-section is a major surgery a lot of women don't take it as serious such as myself did not take it serious when I did have an emergency c-section or was going into an emergency c-section so I definitely want you ladies to know that this is an extensive surgery they're opening your body up and pulling a baby out okay so i definitely want you to prepare yourself mentally educate yourself get as much knowledge as you can because whenever you educate yourself and inform yourself and do your research that will make you not as nervous going in and it also make you aware of what can happen I didn't educate myself just to let you ladies know I didn't educate myself on both spectrums and that, that's something that I really wish I would have done prior to my delivery of which of which I thought was going to be a vaginal okay so definitely don't be so stuck on oh I'm going to definitely deliver my baby vaginally um, because you never know what can happen so moving on to tip number one so tip number one for you ladies and I wish I would have known is that there are two options on closing your area after a c-section you are able to get a stitch or you can also get glue which is a new way um, that has been invented on closing the c-section area so with me i was actually glued up but it doesn't matter which whichever you or your doctor or surgeon may prefer both are known to be successful for closing up a cesarean so tip number two for me would be to shave okay so if, so if you know that you are having a planned cesarean or whether you are just planning on having a vaginal I definitely encourage you to shave that area um, prior to whichever may happen so if you're planning on being induced definitely shave before being induced and if you are having a planned cesarean i definitely encourage you to shave that area for me um <laughs> your girl did not shave that area at all okay i know that's too much tmi but you're not going to be able to do anything to that area for six weeks okay for me it was already hard to shave for being pregnant but you ain't gonna be able to shave baby girl after having the c-section so i definitely encourage you to shave after i meant before you have your cesarean okay so in my case i had an emergency c-section and i delivered my baby girl and i was not shaved <laughs> okay so now your girl has a whole wolf pack going on down there okay and i can't do anything about it even within my c-section scar um i have hair right around it and glue is all through it so i definitely encourage you to shave okay i can't even stress that enough because for me cleaning that area is really difficult because hair is caught up in the glue and i'm not even trying to make a, a visual for you but i'm just trying to forewarn you my girlfriend my sister okay because i didn't know that 
And I didn't even know that I was going to have an emergency C-section. Your girl thought she was going to push her out. So I didn't think I needed to shave. But definitely take precaution and shave the area. All right, so going into tip number three. So tip number three, I definitely, um, after my emergency c-section if you have not seen that video definitely check that video out i have a card right here and also a link in the description box below for me with the gas thing okay so i had bad bad gas okay i was not able to pass that gas until the second day um for me i had a catheter within my body uh hooked up to me Okay, so if y'all, some of y'all ladies may not know, for those who may not know, a catheter is whenever they um, hook up something within your area, your lahuha area, and you pee through it. So you don't have to get up and go to the bathroom. So you're just peeing without even knowing that you're peeing. Because I didn't even know I was peeing. The ladies were just coming in there, changing my bag, and I didn't even know. So that prevented me from having to get up and go to the bathroom or even move around in that case. So the gas was really backed up for me. Um, on the second day, my nurse definitely forced me out of bed because of them doing their job basically. I almost had a panic attack. That's how bad the pain was. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm definitely not trying to scare you. But I'm just trying to forewarn you on what to expect, okay? The pain is so excruciating. I've never had gas pain that bad. I'm just saying. I really never had. And whenever it was time for me to get up, y'all, like I was literally about to cry from all the pain. And my, um, my baby's father was just looking at me like girl are you okay because i was like oh my god i'm about to have a panic attack i don't want to have a panic attack because it was cutting my breath and i was not able to really breathe and it's just something that i was like man i did not know the pain could be that bad walk around your room room walk around the hallways if you can just walk and for me i had to bend over and sway side to side to get that gas out but walk around girlfriend i'm telling you it definitely helps and also added on to that with the pain you have stomach pain which leads me on to tip number four i definitely encourage you to take some kind of pain reliever or painkiller um for me um, since I was breastfeeding, I did not want to take any narcotics such as Percocet or Oxycodone because of me breastfeeding. And the nurse did let me know that very little would pass to Kenzie. But I was just like, girl, no. I don't even want to take no risk. I don't, I don't want to do it. So, uh-uh. No ham, no ham, no turkey. I'm sorry, I can't do it. So, I did not denied all narcotics but i took motrin and tylenol okay that was the only two that helped me and i fought through the pain and i'm not saying if you are um you have a high tolerance in pain to not take any painkillers that's definitely not what i'm saying but what i'm trying to tell you is the pain does is is very high it is for me it started out on the first day at an eight eight and a half nine and it went down to like a four and a five after day three um it was it was definitely dropping but if you definitely cannot tolerate pain i definitely encourage you to take the painkillers because you rather catch it before it gets too bad kind of thing but for me in my case um i was able to fight through it and only deal the Motrin and the Tylenol really helped me and I didn't want to take anything else and I felt like that was really helping solve my problem. Just definitely know that with the Percocets that it can also stop you up. What leads me into step, tip number five. I had got home and I was not able to make a bowel movement so it took about four days for me so i was in the hospital for three nights and on the fourth day um we were able to go home 
and that's when I was able to do a bowel movement. My nurse definitely recommended that I take stool softeners even when I got home, but your girl hard-headed and I just fought through it, okay? But I definitely, 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 definitely encourage you to take a stool softener if you are if you are not a person that meditates if you are not a person who can relax your body and just go into a calm place to help pass a bowel movement such as me because for me how I help how I was able to not have as much pain whenever I was passing a bowel movement was by just closing my eyes and just thinking and relaxing my body and thinking I was on a beach kind of thing just a relaxing spot for me and it helped me to have a less painful bowel movement experience now and that leads me into tip number six I should have said this after tip number two but for me um, your girl had a ruptured uterus and I had a lot of blood dripping down my leg when I went into the ER that night and after I had my emergency c-section I wanted to shower so if you can take a shower prior to your cesarean or prior to your birth definitely do that but just to forewarn you you will not be able to shower within for like 24 hours for me I wasn't able to shower for like 25 26 hours your girl was like can I take a shower can I take a shower? No. Can I take a shower? <laughs> My baby daddy even asked her for me. No. Like, I wanted to shower so bad, you guys. And on the second day, I was finally able to take a shower. So definitely keep that in mind that you will not be able to shower immediately after your cesarean. A lot of people who have a vaginal birth are giving a room with like a jacuzzi and all of this and they are able to take a bath right after but for us special ladies we're not so just prepare yourself okay and i'm not saying like just bask in that moment if that makes you feel better because it definitely made me okay i'm just saying i'm just saying sis i'm just saying all right that leads me into the last the second to the last tip okay so within this tip I just want to let you ladies know that for me being a melanated woman and a woman of color um, whenever I looked at my stomach after having my cesarean my stomach was discolored okay so in that area you're gonna have discoloration just for a, probably about a month or two months it may take time and just prepare yourself for your body changes that may last temporarily or for a lifetime but your girl's stomach look like a black 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 like it been burnt okay I'm just saying I'm just saying so with the discoloration on the stomach just make sure you are moisturizing your stomach and properly care for your skin postpartum because um, you actually can help your skin rejuvenate back to its original color so for me I'm using coconut oil to moisturize my stomach and I do see the color coming back in after three weeks so it's not all the way there but it's peeking through like peekaboo but it's still black as hell I'm just saying I actually have some more tips hmm for another tip is to definitely wear high-waisted panties okay because I didn't own any after my cesarean but I had to go out and purchase some because having my bikini drawers that I used to wear or do wear um, was not comfortable for me at all they would press against that surgical scar and it was swelled up and it was just like the most discomforting feeling ever so definitely um, get you some loose fitted clothes and some high-waisted panties okay so I'll do another video with my three-week postpartum 
because as of now your girl is like healed i feel completely back to normal right now within three weeks and i'm not saying that I'm, I'm still lifting heavy things or anything but your girl definitely feels normal so it does take time but you will eventually get back to yourself so i believe i'm gonna wrap this up with whether you have a vaginal birth or a cesarean whether you have planned to have a vaginal birth and you are forced to have a cesarean you are still giving birth to your baby okay uh, for me it did take something I feel like a little piece away from me because I wanted to have my daughter vaginally but I also grew so much strength within that time okay because of the extent that my surgery was and having to go into that kind of surgery and deliver your baby does not make you less of a woman it definitely does not make you less of a mother you are still a mother you are still a strong and beautiful woman and you just delivered a beautiful baby okay so bask in that moment don't be so worried about how you delivered her or him definitely i encourage you to just accept what comes and make it the best thing possible okay so don't be so hard on yourself okay i know that it's easy to allow those thoughts to overwhelm your mind by not feeling like you're you're strong enough you are because for me i felt like why was i not able to give birth vaginally like that does not make me less of a woman and that does not make me less of a mother i still had a healthy baby and trust the doctor's um, choice whenever they are uh, requesting that you have a plan c-section or whether you are rushed into an emergency c-section just trust trust that everything will be okay keep a positive mindset because for me i my mind was everywhere at that time i was just like thinking about all the things that could go wrong but definitely keep your mind at peace and just trust and believe that everything will be okay because it will and last but not least you guys i love you thank you for tuning in into this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to get notified whenever i do post a video and i'm definitely going to continue posting mommy videos postpartum videos so definitely hit the notification bell so you will be notified whenever i do post a video because who wouldn't want to know the tea with me i'm just saying i'm just saying sis i'm just saying <laughs> Until next time, mommies. I'll see you later. Bye.